Hello everyone, welcome to Jennifer Sewing and Creativity. If it's your first time joining my channel, welcome. If you're joining from a previous video or you are a previous subscriber, welcome back. So in today's video, I'm going to go over more on the FAF Creative 4.0. But first I'd like to um, kind of like give you a little update on a few things of this machine. Um, I did buy this machine used. This machine, from my research, was first made in 2009. And I believe my particular model is anywhere from 8 to 10 years old. And that's just kind of like a little bit of the research that I've done according to like the serial numbers and things like that and asking questions at my local um, FAF dealer. So that's kind of what we figured without me physically taking the machine into them to let them see more of it. It just, it wasn't necessary. So anyway, um, for those of you that don't know, I did buy this machine used on eBay. And for the used price, I still paid 1800 for the machine and then with the taxes and shipping it was just over 2000 so this still is a sought after machine and the model up from this one is the creative 4.5 but in my research on trying to find out more about this machine um, through YouTube or just online period there's not a lot of videos out there about this machine. I'm not sure why that is. Um, I have found videos on the 3.0, on the 4.5, and then the models that are up from that. But I have not found a lot on the Creative 4.0. I don't know why that is. So in my fashion, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you... Um, as I learned this machine, just like as I did on the Brother SE625 machine that I have, I'm going to go over everything that this machine can do. Well, everything that will pertain to my use. And then if any of you do have questions um, about certain things, then I can go into those, a little, make a video and go into those a little bit further. Um, when I bought this machine, um, the seller stated that there were only nine confirmed hours on this machine. So it was like five embroidery hours and three documented sewing hours. And there are ways that you can go into your settings and you can determine how many sewing hours are on the machine. So, um, and I'm sure him being a dealer and a repairman, he was able to go in a little bit further that he knows how to do that. Okay, so in the previous video, I went over everything that is on the ex external part of the machine, all the buttons, the stitches up here that are on the lid, um, all the parts, and then the video previous to that one, I went over all the accessories of the machine. So if you haven't seen those, um, please refer to those. I will leave a link or... Um, uh, at the end of the video you can you can click on it and it'll take you to the previous video or you can just go ahead and go to those on your own. Um, what we are going to do today is I'm going to go over everything that the HD screen does. Um, I believe on the newer models FAF does call their the HD screen an LCD screen now since it's more modern and um, Everything's been kind of new, upgraded, the new technology. But this is just called an HD screen now um, when this one was made. So we're just going to kind of, I'm going to follow along in the manual. And this manual is like really intense. So I can understand maybe why the previous owner, back when they bought this machine new, why they probably didn't use it a lot. Um, there is a lot to do 
to get to what you're going to do, you have to kind of do a lot. So back then, I'm sure this technology was overwhelming because it a few of the things have been overwhelming for me now. So being that I have not been able to find a lot of videos on this machine, I'm just trying to learn it the best way I know how. Um, a lot of the things in the manual don't go really far in depth. So you kind of, you kind of just have to kind of follow along the best way in the manual and kind of look at the pictures and the numbers and just kind of figure out what you have to do because there's, it doesn't go in depth enough like what the modern manuals do and what the videos, um, say like on my brother 625 machine um, when I bought it the the internet is flooded with videos on that machine there I mean if what you whatever you want to know about that machine basically you can look it up online and you can find it um, it is I'm not sure what that what the brother SE 625 machine how long that one's been on the market but um, it was pretty easy for me to learn because there was a lot, if I had a question, the manual was answered it clearly. But with this FAF Creative 4.0, I have not been able to do that. So what I thought I would do is I'm, I'm going to go in depth and show you what this model can do. Because being that this machine is such a great machine, and it is still sought after by many embroiderers and sewers. Um, like I said, I bought mine on eBay. If you do a search for Faf Creative 4.0s for sale, you are going to get them coming up still. So um, I'm going to try to remedy, the, excuse me, remedy that a little bit with my videos that I that. Hopefully, if somebody else purchases one used like I did, um, if they do a search, my video may, may come up and help them to learn about this machine. Okay, so enough of that. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and get into it. I am going to adjust the camera here, and we're going to concentrate on the HD screen, and I'm going to hope that the camera kind of adjusts a little bit. Um, the screen isn't really super bright, so we're going to just kind of get right up on that and we're going to hopefully be able to see everything. And I actually had somebody, okay, off topic again, sorry. I actually had somebody ask me on why I have a Frosted Flakes box here in the corner. And <laughs> I use um, old cereal boxes like that for magazine stands um, or magazine racks. I will, um, I'll either cover them with like a pretty fabric or anything like that. And then I just put my quilting magazines in them instead of going out and <laughs> buying um, magazine holders. So it was just my little penny pinching way. So. Um, that one has some older magazines in it, um, so we just kind of put it there on the end. Okay, now, back to topic. Sorry about that. I'm rambling on today. Okay, so on our HD screen, the first thing, um, first thing you want to do is that, whoops, well gosh dang it. Okay, so you're going to have your stylus that comes with the machine, and there's a little hole right here where your stylus kind of clicks in there. And to remove it, you just kind of pull it forward a little, and it pops out. Okay, so that's what that is. Okay, so you're going to want to definitely use your stylus, and... I'm really sorry. I wish this was clearer. I wish or, or brighter. Um, I don't know how much more I can get it there. I hope you guys can see that okay. 
Um, so first of all, in your manual, you're going to see how this portion of the screen is kind of a grayish blue, light blue color. In your manual, um, everything is going to have color on it. So you're able to kind of um, match the color on the screen with the manual to, to know what area that you need to look. Um, okay, so um, every mode that is entered will have its own color to make it easier to use on the machine. So um, for our sewing mode, it's going to be this blue color. Okay. So we are now going to go with your start view. So when you turn on your machine, um, let's go ahead and turn it back off. And when you start it, your machine is going to take a minute to, well, not a minute, but a few seconds to come up because it is a computerized machine. It's basically like when you start up your laptop or your desktop computer, it's booting up. So you're going to hear a little bit of noise with, for the needle to calibrate itself. And it's going to, there we go, pops on. And this is your welcome screen. Okay. And then it's going to pop to sewing mode. And there is your sewing mode. If you do have your embroidery unit attached to the machine, it will pop up in the embroidery mode. And your embroidery mode will, that is what your embroidery mode will look at, will look like. So let's go back to the, okay. So being that we're gonna go in order to the manual. So this is what your sewing mode looks like. And then your main parts are going to be your task bar, which is here. Whoops, sorry about that. I don't know what I hit. Oh, I think I hit my view. Well. Nope. Okay, we're going to delete all that. And I don't know what I hit to get that to get that screen. Okay, there we go. Back to normal. Okay. So I don't know what I hit. I didn't I wouldn't pay attention to what I hit. <laughs> okay. So you're gonna have your task bar, which is A. And this bar down here at the bottom, I'm going to kind of get down there a little bit closer because it is really hard to see. And that is your task bar, this dark bar down here at the bottom. And being that this is an older machine, I really wish it, you could light up the screen a little bit better. I have not been able to figure out a way to do that. Um, I really like I said I wish it was just brighter. It's not bright enough for me. So some of the some of the icons I do have to kind of get in there and really look at. So this like I was saying is your task bar here. And it's used for selecting and activating different functions. And the look of the task bar is going to change depending on whether um, you're in sewing mode or whether you're in embroidery mode. And this button this little part right here, you'll see that this little part right here is kind of like the sewing foot. So if you hit that, it changed to the embroidery hoop. So that is where your taskbar, where you can switch between your modes. So your embroidery hoop for embroidery and the sewing foot for sewing. And um, also, um, you're going to hit this button if your embroidery unit is on the machine and you want to remove it you need to hit the mode here and you're going to take it back to sewing mode to close out the embroidery mode and what it does is that recalibrates the arm on the embroidery unit for storage 
so you can take that off and set your embroidery unit aside. Okay, so let me go back out just a little bit. And I'm sorry for all the camera moving again. Okay, hopefully, hopefully that will work out there. Okay, so um, that was our taskbar and you change the modes by touching the sewing and embroidery toggle. And then the taskbar will always be located at the bottom of your screen. And then you have a options bar, which is this one here on the side. So this from where it starts at the file and these ones here. And the options bar will be visible in almost every view and on the right hand side of the screen. So that's never going to change its position. It's always going to be there. And um, the options bar has different options depending on which mode is active. So if, um, being in sewing mode or your embroidery mode, that will, that will change. And I really hope you guys can see that okay. Well, maybe I can get just a hair closer. Um, I hope. I'm really sorry. I wish this was brighter. Um, but being older technology, that was my, my um, light. I'm trying to get everything set there. I hope you guys can see that okay. Um, okay. So dip back to the taskbar, and your main functions of your taskbar are, so I showed you the sewing and embroidery toggle, which is there. Then you have um, this little button here, and it's very faint and hard to see, and that is your sequencing and embroidery text editor. So you're going to hit that when you're... Um, Sequencing your stitches, and we'll get into sequencing a lot later. Um, so it's going to be several videos before we get to that. But I believe sequencing is... Um, um, you can combine various stitches, and you can adjust them. So um, you can use built-in stitches, and then you can also load stitches um, from external devices, or you can use stitches that you've created on your own. It's got a, cre um, a creator that you can bind stitches, and you can um, make kind of like make your own stitch, which is really a nice feature. So, and then you can also program tie-offs, stops, and thread snips into your sequence. So we'll get to that later in a video in another video, but that is what this this little icon down here does for you. Then number three is a stitch creator. You're going to hit that one to create your own stitches to combine your stitches, things like that. And then number four, this one, that takes you to your selection menu. Okay, and then to close it, you just close up here at the top. And then number five, this little like tool wrench screwdriver thing is your settings. That takes you to your settings. So I have my owner's name in there. I have a few things programmed. Um, so your 60 for embroidery is um, a spring foot. I do not have a spring foot um, on the machine, so we're going to take that off. You, um, I have found through looking through the manual that on the autosave, the current state, you do not want to do that because it will take items longer to load into the machine. Um, like saying that you, you want to go from um, when you hit a Embroidery design, it'll take longer for those to come up and for each step to come up. And on this one, you'll see disk um, or fragment machine memory, defrag, defragment machine memory. And that kind of helps clear up the computer in the machine. So it kind of, it's just like, a, it cleans it. So there's that. And we'll go over all this later in uh, settings. Okay. 
So then you have your info and it just kind of blinks on you and you you can kind of hit anything on the machine and like it pops up. So once if the info is blinking, you can hit whatever you want and it's going to bring up this other window. So I hit this little button here and it says it opens window where you can select free motion techniques. So there's that. And that is if you do your, and you'll see that that's blinking down there. So anything you touch, it's going to tell you what. Okay. So um, also with that sequencing and the embroidery editor with that button that was here, um, it's going to open different windows depending on what mode is active. So um, if you're using stitch fonts or embroidery fonts, it's going to it's going to open up your different windows. Okay. So in, in embroidery mode, so we're going to switch to embroidery mode now, and that is this button here. Okay. And there is our embroidery mode. And The embroidery toggle icon switches between your embroidery edit and your embroidery stitch out. So that's what this button is here. And I know you can't see it, but it is there. It's really there. It, what it looks like is a frame with a little butterfly in it. And what that does is the embroidery toggle icon switches between your embroidery edit and your embroidery stitch out. So. I don't have anything selected, so it's not going to change anything for me right now. Um, we'll get into that a little bit more when I go through on how to select a design and things like that. And um, it will be that that icon will be hidden while um, it's not lit up right now because I do not have a design um, selected and it will be hidden also when sewing mode is active. Okay, so on the task bar, um, the task bar is over here, and, oops, uh, task bar, sorry, <laughs> toggle, see, that's what I mean. With this machine, there's so much information on this little screen that you can easily get confused. So, because like I said, there's task bar, and then there is the... So task bar and options bar is our, our, what was over here on the side. And I'm actually going to make some labels so I can put on the machine just so I, I, my brain can think a little faster and I, and I know what's there. So um, anything that helps. Um, okay, so when you use your task bar down here at the bottom, um, you're going to toggle between sewing mode and the embroidery mode by using the toggle icon. And that was that one. And then to activate any function, you touch the icon on the taskbar. When a function is activated, the icon will be selected and you can make your adjustments. So that's what this one was. And since we don't have the um, embroidery unit on there and to select a design, um, it's not lit up. Um, so there's that. And then you've got common icons. And there are some very common icons and functions that are frequently used on the screen. And the most common ones are, let me go back. And your most common one is going to be where this arrow and this arrow is. This is your scroll bar. And it lets you scroll between all your stitches or you can grab the little and you can run it up and down. And that is your scroll bar. Then you have your OK and your cancel. So um, let's bring this one up. So I'm going to just hit this one. And no, that did not work. So let's see. Um, let's, okay, so I selected that. That didn't do nothing. Um, let's try. Do, do, do. 
I'm gonna try to that didn't work okay so I was trying to bring up where um, the little window pops up and where you have the the um, where you can delete your stitches or do whatever you want to do. It'll have a check mark or the X, and that is your um, OK and your cancel. So your your check mark will be your OK, and your X will be your um, cancel. So there will be that one. And to, to end an actual process, you're going to touch cancel. To continue, of course, you'll hit OK. OK. Then... Um, when you ha when you're doing something, um, you're going to do a long touch. So let's go back to like embroidery, and I'm going to just pop something up here. Let's just try this, okay? And to close this window, I'm going to do this, okay? And it didn't do nothing, but I was able to bring up the this little one right here, and to um, long touch anything, um, you, some icons will have an increased function marked with an arrow. So if you can see this little arrow right there um, at the lower right corner, to access these functions, you touch and you hold the icon for, for a couple seconds. And basically that is what you're going to do with a lot of functions on this machine. Um, when I first tried to do a embroidery, um, I I wasn't I couldn't bring up my USB stick because I was clicking it, I was touching the button, but it wasn't doing nothing. And the reason why is because I wasn't doing a long hold or um, a long touch. So um, always do the press and kind of hold until it, the function actually happens that you want to do. So then you have some touch functions which are which are over here and the touch functions will be used to make adjustments. Um, there are up to four functions to use and then you, ha you have right down here you'll see this portion here um, the F is to move it around on the screen. The this one here is going to be rotate. So let's see. I'm going to just bring up, up a. Um, let's just do. I don't know. Okay, so that's not bringing anything up. So. Um, I was trying to bring something up on the screen for you so you could see it, but it ain't going to let me do it. Um, so you'll have your rotate, then this one will be your scale. You're going to be able to um, make it smaller, or you're going to make it larger. Um, and then you have pan, which um, this one is going to let you... You can kind of see this, this line here represents your frame. So you, with the pan button here, you're going to be able to move it around so you can see everything that's in that the frame field. Okay. Um, so when the function's selected, you can make adjustments by touching the arrows in the wheel here to the side, um, or you can just kind of like what I showed you. So you can see that this one does it this way. You can move it like I showed you. So either way that works for you. Um, the appearance of the wheel is going to change depending on the function that you select. But in most cases the center icon has the function. But when pan is selected it will just show your pan symbol. So right here. So I have pan and then here. And then on your rotate, it's gonna it does have a um, a really dim rotate one there, and it's gonna show you um, how you can rotate. Also, I have found that um, 
rotate can be really temperamental. So it, you can move it with your icon, you can move it with your finger, but if you want the really fine, fine, like, um, say you want to move something 90 degrees, you can move part of it with your, your, with your hand or your stylus, and then um, you can touch your buttons to click it right into 90 degrees. So it's going to take precise, I mean, when you're, when you're on there, it's going to take real slow to get it to exactly where you want it. But if you want to click it in um, to exactly that 90 degrees or whatever you're going to want to move it, um, use your little arrows. So that'll be a little bit better, a little bit easier. And I think that will be what we're going to cover today. Um, in the next video, I will go over the... Okay, where was our selections menu? And close that one. Okay, so that was where I told you about the um, your OK and your cancel. It tells me delete all stitches. So yes, I want to do that. And it deleted everything. So I want to, okay, there were our options. Okay. So um, on our next video, I'm going to go over everything on what this screen does. Your, um, your, let's go here. So this is going to be your selection menu. And um, we'll go over that. And then we'll do selecting your fonts. And we're just kind of um, go step by step into what the manual does. And I hope you stick around for those videos, and we will see you all soon. If you have any questions, please leave to, um, ask down in the in the comments down below. Um, if you'd like me to go over something again, please let me know, and I can do that again. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Please um, click that thumbs up if you like the video. That lets me know that you really um, like the videos. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>